Rick Perry calling a program that for 75 years has never failed to write a check, right? No Social Security check has ever been missed. No Social Security check has ever bounced. And Rick Perry saying, uh, you know, uh, we're not, uh, this is a Ponzi scheme after all. It's a Ponzi scheme. Right. Right. See, uh, the way the Ponzi schemes work is that uh, Charles Ponzi set this thing up in 1919, as I recall. might have been 1918 on Pi, in a little alley, a little street in Boston called Pi Alley. And at one point he had something like 15 or 20 people who were doing nothing but counting money. And people would come in and they'd say, okay, I, I put in 100 bucks," And he'd say, great, you know, you'll get, a, you'll get a return on your investment. And two weeks later, they'd get back 150 And they're all, t everybody's telling their friends, hey, this is the hottest thing since sliced bread. And, of course, what Ponzi was doing was he was taking new money and using it to pay back old money. The difference was, and what makes a Ponzi scheme a Ponzi scheme, is that you're paying back the old money with larger amounts than the new money. So it is destined to explode. It has to reach the point where it dies. And Charles Ponzi is skimming a whole pile of money off the top of it. And Social Security has neither of those. I mean, I, you know, I used to uh, allow conservatives occasionally, you know, go, go off on these, you know, crazy lines about, you know, Social Security. And I'd say, well, you know, having a program where you pay into it and then you get paid out of it, you know, you can call it whatever you want. I, I, you know, I thought in America we called it insurance. But, uh, you know, Rick Perry, this is uh, clip number six. This is, this is. This is Rick Perry's campaign slogan. We got to be focused on how we're going to change this program. And people who are on Social Security today, they don't need to worry about anything. And it is a monstrous lie. It is a Ponzi scheme to tell our kids that are 25 or 30 years old today, you're paying into a program that's going to be there. Anybody that's for the status quo with Social Security today is involved with a monstrous lie to our kids. And it's not right. Yeah, and so, you know, the monstrous lie, obviously, is, is Rick Perry's. Social Security is solid. It's solvent. There's $2.6 trillion, maybe $2.7 trillion in the trust fund, which, by the way, Wall Street wants to get its hands on, which I'm sure is who's talking to Rick Perry. And for the next 25 years, it'll pay everything without a problem. After that, it'll pay 70% or 80% of benefits without a problem. And that's assuming that we stay in a recession all those years, which ain't going to happen. And if we simply lifted the cap so the people making more than $106,000 started paying into Social Security, right now they don't. Rich people don't pay, uh, you know, any, even a fraction of, of what janitors pay into Social Security. If we simply lifted the cap and said rich people have to pay too, Social Security is solvent forever. Anyhow, I wanted to pick up your, your uh, questions and calls. Oops, I, sociologist just threw a window in front of me. Let me close that so I can get to my call screen software. And let's pick up your thoughts Oh, Michael, you're a Republican, and you liked the debate. Welcome. Thanks for listening in uh, Long Beach to KTLK. What's up? I'm not a Republican, by the way. Oh, you're not? Uh, but the, okay. No, I'm, I'm not. Sorry. I'm an independent voter. Okay. But the point is, is that you guys on the left can marginalize saying that they're the, they're the eight stooges, and uh, you can marginalize Perry and Ronnie for all you want, because you guys feel threatened. Obviously, you feel threatened with these two guys, because... They pull them together against Obama, and both of them either are ahead of Obama or close to him in the race for president. And I think that, you know, the only reason why you guys are marginalizing these, you know, Kerry and Romney is because you you feel that uh, they can, you can defeat uh, Obama. So you, you actually believe that getting rid of Social Security and Medicare is a good thing? No, I don't, because I'm on Social Security myself. Then but why the would you is, why would you why would you support Romney because or Perry? I know that eventually, because I know that they 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 talk all they want, but it's not going to be uh, it's not going to come to to the the way that it's, it's a status quo. So they're not going to change. But you know the Republicans passed with with only three Republicans dissenting. Almost a hundred percent of all the Republicans in the House of Representatives passed a law a few months ago that would have turned that would have ended Medicare and turned it into a voucher system. 
Well, I mean, they're actually you know, about doing it now. They've been they've been talking about it for 30 years. They're actually about doing it now. I would take these guys seriously, Michael. If you think that they're just up there posturing and lying to the American people, and, and, and if so, I don't understand why you're defending them, but if you think that they're just lying and they're not really going to do what they're saying, I'd say look out. Okay, well, you know, I'm... Oh, when it when it comes to when it comes to uh, to reality, then I'll realize that. But you know, they, they, everyone's talking about it. No, they, you know, they, if it happens, what are you going to do? You know, the politicians have to speak to their constituents, and they have to be reelected. Vote them out if you don't like them. Yeah, well, that's what I'm suggesting we do in 2012: is we vote out every Republican in the House and Senate, and we reelect the Democrat. Michael, thanks for the call, Brian in L.A. Hey, Brian, what's up? Hey, Tom. Um, I wanted to get your thoughts a little bit on just the divisive, polarizing context in which our whole political system works. And the, the example I like to use is if you see two people and, and, and one, one guy lives in a, a tiny little cardboard shack and another guy next door lives in a mansion, Republicans would typically say, well, the guy who lives in a little uh, cardboard shack, he's probably lazy and he didn't really, you know, start a business or create any wealth for himself, and so he deserves to live there. And the person who lives in the mansion, you know, must have gone to school or somehow invented right. something or, you know, your, your point. And then other people, real quick, and then other people would say, oh, no, no, that's not fair. They both should live in medium sized houses. And those people typically are Democrats. And so we have this divisive context. Well, I don't think that there's there's any Democrats who are suggesting that everybody should live in a medium-sized house, uh, uh, Brian. I, you know, I think your characterization is inaccurate, and 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 kind of follows the, you know, the 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 line from the Heritage Foundation and these other right-wing think tanks that suggest that Democrats basically are are communists. Ain't the case. You're li-